There is a chronic epidemic of women who are just totally burnt out. And if that's you, I sympathize with you. I know how hard it can be. I've been there myself. It's not fun. So I hope that understanding these five things can help you to maybe see why this is happening and what you can do to turn it around. Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new around here, my name is Jills and I talk about things like feminine energy, self-improvement, and wellness for women. So if that's something you want to learn more about, be sure to hit the red subscribe button below as well as the notification bell so you don't miss when I put out any new videos. So in today's video, I want to talk about burnout because this is something that so many women struggle with and this is something that I really, really struggled with in the past and it's unfortunately just so common and I hate that it's so common. But women are disproportionately more affected by burnout than men and it's not because we're weak. I'm just going to say that up front. It's not because we're weak, but there are five big things that I notice a lot of women doing or not doing that can really affect this. And these are things that I wish I was more conscious of several years ago because it would have really helped me. So let me get into it. The first thing that I want to talk about because it is so, so important. And one of the biggest causes for burnout, in my opinion, is living out of alignment. If you're living out of alignment with who you truly are, you can only do that for so long until you will just feel completely drained and burnt out. For example, you know I talk a lot about masculine and feminine energy on this channel and if you are an innately feminine woman and you're operating predominantly from your masculine, in the short term this isn't really a big deal, it's fine, but in the long term over many many years this is going to really wear you down. This is going to be so draining. This energetic imbalance is so draining for the nervous system. Everything feels heavy when you're not being yourself. But this isn't just with feminine energy. This is with everything in your life. Maybe you feel unaligned with your career. Maybe you feel unaligned with your friendships. Maybe you feel unaligned with the city that you live in. For example, you can feel the difference when you spend two hours with friends that completely lift you up. And when you walk away, you feel alive and energized versus spending two hours with friends where when you walk away, you just feel completely drained and you feel like you need to take a nap. That energy kick that's with the first one, that's a sign from your body saying, yes, more please, do more of this. When you do things that light you up and are more aligned with you, these should, for the most part, be giving you energy. They should make you feel more alive, not making you feel drained. Now, realistically, 100% of our day is not gonna be spent doing things that can completely light us up. You know, emptying the dishwasher doesn't particularly light me up, but it has to be done. But those big things, the things like your job, your purpose, your community and friendships, your energy, you know, your masculine and feminine energy, and the way you live your life, these are things that are so, so important. Are you living your purpose or do you even know what your purpose is? Are the bulk of the things that you're doing during the day, are they aligned with who you are, who you want to be, and the presence and impact you want to make on this world? Are they aligned with your strengths and passions? Are they aligned with what brings you joy? Once I started reevaluating my life and making changes, you know, when I started reevaluating my career and how it could align more with my passions, when my husband and I started realigning our marriage to make it the way that we really wanted it to be, when we moved across the country to a new city because for some reason it just felt like home. Yeah, it was a little bit hard at first and scary. You know, change can oftentimes be quite uncomfortable. But when I started doing these things, that's when my energy started to actually come back. That's when I started to feel more alive again. So if you're feeling burnt out and unaligned in your life, you have to start getting in touch with who you truly are and start honoring that and owning that and seeing the beauty in that. Another reason why I think so many women might be feeling burnt out is because they are not honoring their cyclical nature. So women of reproductive years, women who are having a period, we have about a month long hormone cycle and our hormones are not the same every day. And being aware of this and really understanding this and honoring this is more important than you might realize. Our hormones are not the same every day and they quite literally affect everything that we do. They affect our food cravings, our energy levels, our creativity and communication skills, all of it. But the world has taught us that we need to expect the exact same of ourselves every single day and that we should be consistent in our daily tasks and kind of do things every single day in the same way. And that works really well for men because they have the same hormones every single day. They tend to thrive off of that kind of consistency and structure. But women, we are different and we have to start appreciating our differences. Just because men can do that and that's how they thrive, it doesn't mean that we have to do it too. And it doesn't mean that not doing it makes us weak. And I talk all about this in my cycle syncing video, but essentially this will 
will lead to burnout because there are times when our bodies are begging us to go, go, go and get a ton done and go to all these different social engagements and plan all these things and be super creative. And then there are times when our bodies are begging for us to slow down, to go more inward, to rest more. It's not bad. And you can see these ebbs and flows as beautiful and powerful if you choose to. But the more you work against your cycle, pushing constantly when your body is begging for you to slow down, the worse you're gonna feel. To fix this, you have to start getting more in touch with your cycle. All women should be intensely in tune with their cycle and where their hormones are at. And I wish this is something that was taught to teenage girls growing up, but unfortunately it's not. And this is also a very powerful way, very underrated way, but a very powerful way to connect with your feminine energy. So I highly encourage you to get more comfortable with your body and your cycle, to start really understanding where your hormones are at and how that might affect you, to start picking up on those signs that your body is telling you to maybe slow down or temporarily make some adjustments and to not just ignore them. I know it sounds really overwhelming at first, understanding your cycle and knowing where your hormones are at, but I promise you it's really easy. If this is something you want to learn more about, definitely go watch the video that I mentioned earlier or get the book In the Flow by Alyssa VT. Learning all this stuff has made a dramatic difference in how good I feel and how much energy I have. Now, a mindset that can lead to a lot of burnout in women is feeling like they they always have to be achieving more and doing everything. There's absolutely nothing wrong with wanting to be a high achieving woman. I want to be one myself, but there comes a point that you reach where it can get too far and it can start to be really unhealthy. To be honest, there are a lot of expectations on women today. And you know, thank goodness for the women's movement because it brought us so many opportunities but it also brought along a lot of expectations. There's a lot of pressure to be the perfect wife and mother, to be the main parent for your children, to have this fabulous career, to be super fit and beautiful, to take care of the home and to remember all the birthdays. It's a lot, but we can't do everything. You have to, again, be really honest with yourself and ask yourself, what do you want out of this life? What are your priorities? What's important to you? For some women, they'll know their main priority is to raise a family. That's what they want out of life. For some women, their main priority priority will be to have this blossoming career. For some women, it will be to travel the world solo. There's no right or wrong. It's only wrong when you're not honoring what you actually want out of life and putting your desires on the back burner because of other people's expectations of you. So don't let other people's expectations of you dictate your life. We have all these opportunities now and it's amazing, but it's internalizing these expectations that's crippling us. You don't have to do everything and you don't have to prove yourself to anyone. So when it comes to burnout, being able to adequately recharge your batteries is obviously super important, but what's happening is that we're not recharging in the right ways. Oftentimes our form of resting and recharging is sitting on the couch or on our bed, just sitting on our phone, scrolling through Instagram or scrolling through different TikToks, or we decide to put on a Netflix murder documentary right before bed and then it just makes us super anxious and we're scared to go to sleep. A lot of times our most common forms of recharging involve lots of heavy technology technology usage and this just makes us feel drained both emotionally and physically. A warm bath, stretching, meditation, getting an extra hour of sleep, going for a walk outside, just getting out in nature, getting a massage. These are things that are actually restorative for us and help us to recharge. So if you're feeling anxious and burnt out lately, it's possible that you haven't been recharging in the right ways. And so your battery is just completely drained. It's on empty. And so I highly encourage you to try a dopamine detox. And this is basically where you just kind of get rid of all technology for a period of time, like for a weekend. And it might feel a little bit uncomfortable at first, but by the end of it, I promise you that you will feel so much more restored. Now, the last thing that's really common with women and can definitely contribute to burnout is putting yourself last. As women, we are innately loving and compassionate. And of course we want to help others feel their best and feel happy. But you've all heard that saying on a plane where you know when the oxygen masks come down, you have to put it on yourself first before you can help others. And that's because you can't really help Help others if you're struggling. Don't be afraid to ask for help when you need to, to say no when you need to sometimes, to make time for that once a week dance class that you 
love so much, even if you're really busy. If we don't prioritize the things we need to feel happy, to feel healthy, to feel energized, it's gonna go downhill real quick. You might need to consistently remind yourself that you are important, that how you feel matters, that you are deserving, that other people's priorities and needs don't always have to overstep yours. Because if you continue to put yourself last, you won't get what you want out of life. I hope this was able to bring some awareness as to why you might be feeling burnt out, but I should have mentioned this in the beginning. Of course, there are physical reasons why you might be feeling burnt out as well. Maybe you're dealing with a chronic illness or your body is just overburdened in some capacity. But even if you know that's the case, don't ignore these less physical things that I just talked about because in my experience, oftentimes they tend to go hand in hand. At least that was the experience for me. If you found this valuable, don't forget to hit the like button. They are free and they really help me and I greatly appreciate it. Now, if you haven't subscribed already, be sure to do that for more content like this. Maybe go check out these videos right here in the meantime. But besides that, I'll see you next week in my next video. Bye guys. Love you.